So we finally have a first paper suggesting that they have found preliminary evidence of vaccine, mRNA vaccine material, be, uh, getting incorporated into a human genome of specific cells. Now, the evidence is sort of weak, in my opinion, so you have to take this with a bit of a grain of salt, but hey, um, we clearly would need way better evidence than what have been proposed, and I'll get to the bottom of that. But Pantura's box has been open. The genie is out of the bottle. First evidence has been proposed and suggested that this can happen. All right, my name is Dr. Mikhail Rashik of Merit Genomics. Let me give you a bit of details. What these authors were doing is they were trying to actually determine how long can this spike protein persist, either the viral spike protein or vaccinal spike protein. And the reason why is because there is this ongoing mystery that is attempted to be resolved as to why do spike proteins persist for as long as they do and why do so many people suffer from long COVID? So that was their goal. So to give you the summary, they did indeed confirm that spike protein, both vaccinal as well as viral, viral spike proteins have been found in the cohort of individuals that they were testing two months after vaccination. So that was their time, time point. Clearly, we made a video showing that this can even last a lot longer. And then they also wanted to determine with sequencing whether either the viral or vaccinal ma genetic material could be incorpor incorporating itself into our human genome. And they looked into that, and of course, I'll talk about that right away. And as I already mentioned, they, they claim they have found some evidence of that. All right, so then... I really enjoyed their intro. So first of all, let's, I'm gonna break down some of their intro. So they mentioned, for example, that long COVID is a condition that is found, they claim between 10 to 20% of uh, individuals who were infected. So lower number than what I have presented before, still quite a considerable number of individuals affected. They mentioned that long COVID is still not understood. Why it's happening, no one understands. And I like the, the list of proposed theories that they mentioned. So they mentioned, for example, autoimmunity via mimicry of the spike protein of what some of our proteins might be doing. And I brought up an example of that. I remember in a video where I mentioned that spike protein resembles galactin-3 protein, which is found in our body. So that, there is an example of mimicry, and we actually don't know what the clinical consequences of that are at all, right? So there is that. They also talked about possibility of uh, maintenance of viral reservoir and virus replication so that the virus um, can continue persisting in our body far, far longer than we can find via, via COVID tests through nasopharyngeal testing. So, and there's definitely evidence of that and for sure. And uh, they also mentioned um, the possibility of integrating the virus genetic information integrating itself into our genomes that has also been proposed before and made a video on that as well. And then finally, they mentioned the fact that spike protein itself, the agent of, of the vaccine, of course, could itself be toxic. And they, and they mentioned, look, spike protein is now known to be in Inflammogenic, I believe is the word they use, basically meaning causing inflammation, as well as, of course, it can cause clots. So, uh, and I did a very large series on that very topic, right? So, so you can check that out as well. So, basically, those are the potential proposed theories. They didn't mention anything on the vagus nerve, one of my favorite potential possibilities of what is causing this. And again, check out a video on that as well. Uh, they mentioned that 
with long COVID, there's evidence of that persisting at least half a year in some individuals and longer. So there's that information that they, that they mentioned as well. And uh, yeah, so that was the, I thought that was the very fun and interesting introduction of the paper. And that was really the bulk of the paper because it's a very small paper for such a, such a um, incredible information that they're stating. It's very short paper. And also I can tell you, I'll get to it later. The, the main claim with regards to uh, incorporation of the genome, that wasn't even in a paper. That was in a um, supplemental material, believe it or not. All right, so what did it do is they wanted to track the spike protein because remember the vaccine of spike protein is mutated. And as a consequence of that, it can be cut up differently than, uh, than the viral protein would be. And, uh, and because of that, you can track the presence of vaccinal spike protein as opposed to viral spike protein via what kind of fragments are produced when the proteins are cut up. So, uh, and I made a, a video on that. So if you're curious about how that works, check out that video for, the ba for background information, okay? So that's what they did. And out of 81 individuals, they found presence of vaccinal spike protein in two people and viral spike protein in one person. And I believe these people were, uh, um, they weren't testing for, for COVID. Uh, they weren't positive for COVID. So, and the conclusion of that, of the authors is like, listen, if people are having long COVID, we should be testing for the potential presence of spike protein, long-term presence of the spike protein okay so then that that's the main conclusion and then they also said and we look for uh, potential integration uh, of the genetic material into the genome uh, and without without uh, further investigation so what did they really do when you go to the supplementary material they uh they use pcr to target specific viral virus genetic component to identify presence of that or specific Pfizer Pfizer mRNA vaccine genetic component and they specifically isolated blood cells called leukocytes from in these individuals and they use PCR polymerase chain reaction which is basically how we were all tested before for COVID-19 they use that to, to see if either the viral genetic material or the vaccine genetic material could be found inside human cells. And they, they found a band that would correspond to the fragment that the PCR should be producing. Because remember PCR, the purpose of PCR is to amplify same genetic material over and over and over and over. And that's how we identify whether specific genetic material is present in our body or not. And they were able to show that there is a band and then they sequenced it and they showed the sequence and they say, look, there is a sequence within the genome of these cells that corresponds to the Pfizer mRNA, a very similar, not identical, but very similar. And they say, look, this suggests, suggests that perhaps the genetic material has been incorporated. They don't expand on that at all. They say, look, there, it's, this is limited information, limited study because there, well, there's limitations. <laughs> and they mentioned the limitation number one is that um, we need further evidence because this could have been either cross contamination and they didn't mess, investigate for this. And or, num or number two, uh, so cross reactivity could be either contamination, meaning vaccine, actual vaccine contamination and not being incorporated, and or number two, cross reaction, cross reactivity, meaning the primers used for PCR, mm, instead of actually finding MR, MR, mm, reverse transcribed vaccine genetic material that was reincorporated into the human genome, maybe targeted something else and accidentally produced that information. Clearly needs further 
And I would believe that it might not even be reverse transcription, meaning basically in order for vaccine itself, the vaccine material to incorporate itself into human genome, it would have to be reverse transcribed from RNA into DNA. And we made a video for Patreon discussing how that's possible. And it is possible. Oh, it just would be expected to be extremely unlikely, but it is possible within our bodies. And then, uh, and, uh, but I actually think it's very likely if they truly did discover this, it, it possibly could have been the bacterial plasmid DNA contamination that have been proposed to exist in vaccines. This is still not official. The, the, the only information so far published on that topic was from preprints and uh, no one is really looking for this. I don't know why this should be so important that this should be investigated thoroughly. But anyway, if bacterial contamination did exist in, uh, in vaccines, then such DNA fragments contaminating the vaccines might have incorporated themselves into, into some of the... <laughs> into some of the uh, cells and perhaps that's how the genetic material was ins inserted but again very very weak evidence but the first one has been presented even the figure itself is not properly labeled so you can't even tell in the figure which sequence is the actual vaccine sequence versus the patient genome sequence but first suggestion has been made so Big deal, very big deal, because, because well, it's quite a, quite a statement. Now, again, we don't know if it's true. We would need a lot more confirmation than uh, what, what has been proposed in order to know this to be true or not. And, but it might lead to enough scientific curiosity that we will obtain such investigation. As I said, things, there, they, this might be possibly true on the account of previously and recently suggested possibility that vaccines have been contaminated with bacterial, bacterial plasmid DNA and that the primary risk of that contamination as mentioned by certain experts is the possibility of those fragments incorporating themselves into our genomes. All right, so this is it. Short, short publication, very, very big one, not, not a smoking gun at all for me, but definitely mm, you no longer can say no one has presented any evidence. So too bad fact checkers, <laughs> because I always laugh at fact checkers because fact checkers use the absence of evidence as an evidence of absence. And that's not the way science works. So uh, that means now we need further studies. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up here. It's a short one, but really interesting one. And I look forward to seeing you next time. And always thank you for your support. Um, thank you for the question. Thank you for the comments. Please share the video. Please like the video. This is how we grow. And, and yeah, I wanna continue being able to make these videos, this content for you. And, uh, and most importantly, Stay active and get outside, go outdoors. Okay, bye everyone.